In this session, we're going to look at the weight force acting on an object. So imagine you have some object and you release this object from rest. If this represents a free body diagram of that object, so here's the object and I want to represent the forces acting on the object, the only force acting on this object if I ignore air resistance will be the weight force. The weight is going to be in the downward direction. Now the other thing that you should notice is that the force of gravity is accelerating this object in the downward direction. So the force of gravity is accelerating this object in the downward direction and we sometimes write this as negative 9.8 meters per second squared or you oftentimes see the acceleration due to gravity written as just negative g. g standing for 9.8 meters per second per second. So if this is our free body diagram, I have one force acting on this object. The force due to gravity pulling this object in the downward direction. The force of gravity is going to accelerate this object in the downward direction. So notice both the force and the acceleration on this object are in the same direction. That's what Newton's second law says, that the net force acting on an object accelerates it in the direction of the net force. So if I look at Newton's second law, which says that if you add up the forces acting on this object, is going to equal the mass of the object times the acceleration of this object. Now one of the things that you should see is that this force is acting in the downward direction. So when you write the force, you have to take into account the direction in which this force is acting. It's acting in the downward direction. So I'm going to write it as minus w. The only force acting on this object is going to be the weight force, and it's acting in the downward direction. And I'm indicating the direction the force is acting by using this negative sign. Now, this force equals the mass of this object times the acceleration due to gravity. Now, we just said that the acceleration due to gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, or negative g. So I can rewrite this as mass times negative g. And let's just summarize those two terms side by side. So I'm writing the weight force is in the downward direction, and that's going to equal mass times the acceleration due to gravity, which we said is negative g. Now one of the things that we can do is we can take this negative sign and pull it out into the front. And when we do that, what you should see is you get minus the weight, or negative weight, equals minus mg. And what you should see is you can cancel out both of those signs. So this sign cancels out with this sign, and what you get is weight is equivalent to the mass of the object times the acceleration due to gravity. Now on Earth, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second. On another planet, for example, the moon, the force of gravity is significantly less, and so the weight of an object would be much less on a separate planet. So the weight of an object depends on the gravitational force of attraction, which influences the rate at which an object is accelerated. So this formula here, or this relationship, which is what we should really call it, tells us the magnitude of the force, that is how big of a force is acting on an object. The thing that you need to keep in mind is that this force acts in the downward direction. And I'll give you an application of that in a second. So imagine now we have some object and, for example, this object is going to sit on the ground. So maybe this object is a box or something. And this object's sitting on the ground. We know that there's at least one force acting on this object, the force due to gravity. Now we have to ask ourselves, why does this object just not accelerate right through the ground? What's stopping this object from just traveling right through the center of the Earth? And the answer to that is that there is another force acting on this object. Literally, the ground pushes up on this object, preventing it from accelerating through the ground. And that's the normal force. The normal force acts in the upward direction. And we'll abbreviate it with a lowercase n. The normal is just a force perpendicular to the surface of the, in this case, the ground. And it prevents the box from accelerating through the ground. Now, a free body diagram for this object, if I represent the object with this dot, the normal force would act in the upward direction. Literally, the normal force is pushing this box in the upward direction in response to an additional force acting in the downward direction, the weight force. And sometimes I write it as a W subscript G to indicate that it's the weight of this object due to the gravitational force. Now, let's look at what Newton's second law says. Now let's look at what Newton's second law says about these two forces. So in this case, if we write out Newton's second law, so the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration. Now if you ever look at an emotionless object on a desk or on the floor, what you should notice is that object is not being accelerated up or down. It's not moving. The velocity of the object is not changing. And so this term right here, the acceleration of this object is going to be zero. So you can cross that off and what you should see is that the sum of the forces equals zero.
That is, the forces are going to balance each other out. Now, in this case, what you should see is that there's two forces acting on this object. There's the normal force acting in the upward direction, and sometimes we write a plus in front of it to indicate that it's acting in the upward direction, and then you're going to add the weight force. Now, the weight force is acting in the downward direction, so I'm going to write explicitly in this term minus w. Why? Because the force is acting in the downward direction. I need to take into account when I add up the forces acting on an object, the direction in which the forces act. Now this is going to add up to be zero. And now I'm just going to simplify this a little bit more because sometimes it's, it's difficult to see when you have a plus a minus number. So I'm going to rewrite this as the normal force minus w equals zero. Now we know what the magnitude of the weight force is. We said the magnitude of the force the mass of the object times the gravitational acceleration of the object. So in place of this term right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the magnitude of that force. So in this case, this term works out to be the normal force minus the weight force, which we have already taken into account the direction in which the force is acting. And so now all we have to do is substitute the magnitude or the size of this force, which in this case works out to be mg, mass times the gravitational acceleration. And the, these forces are going to add up to be zero. So now the next thing you're going to do, let me just simplify this so as not to confuse you. I, I have the normal force minus the weight force, and we just said that the weight force is equal to mass times the gravitational acceleration, and that's going to equal zero. So now what I want to know is, I want to know the magnitude of the weight force when this object is just sitting on, say, a desk or a table or a floor. And in this case, what you need to do is add the weight force to both sides, mg to both sides. What you do to one side of an equation, you have to do to the other side. And when you do that, what you should see is you get the normal force minus mg plus mg is zero equals mg, which in this case equals the weight force. So in this one particular case, the weight force equals the normal force.